Today, we are at a totally new location, way south of where we generally are. We are just outside of O'Clock, New Georgia at Toto's Antique Shop. If you're down in the Thomasville, Georgia area, and you are in the market for a real piece with history, check out Toto's Antique Shop and tell them Jay from What It's Like YouTube channel sent you there. That's my name. I'm Jay. I totally, I'm sorry. I totally did not introduce myself. I wasn't entirely sure how I wanted this channel to work. I don't mind being called Mr. What It's Like, but I figured it's time now to say my name. My full name is Justin, but just call me Jay. Jay is so much easier. One syllable, easier to remember. We are here to take a closer look at this 1959 Mercury Montclair. But before we take the tour, welcome to what it's like. This channel, we feature the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that are off the beaten path. If that sounds like a channel that you would dig watching, subscribe. Hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. Before getting into our featured car, let's talk 1959 Ford model lineup. Ford offered four different brands in 1959. Ford, Mercury, Edsel, Lincoln. 1959 Mercury offered three trim levels, the Monterey, Montclair, Park Lane. Our car is the Montclair, so we're going to come back to that one. But the Monterey was bottom of the barrel. It came with a 312 Y-block V8 as standard, or one could opt and get the 383 cubic inch displacement engine instead of the 312. Both the Monterey and the Montclair rode the smaller 126-inch wheelbase. Moving to Park Lane, Park Lane was the top of the heap for Mercury, 1959 it replaced the turnpike cruiser which was the top of the heap in 1958 the park lane rode a 128 inch wheelbase it came with power steering and power self-adjusting brakes as standard equipment also was powered by the 430 cubic inch displacement v8 mel engine wagons came in three different flavors the commuter wagon voyager and colonial park let's talk Montclair. Mercury used Montclair series twice. Their first run was from 1955 to 1960. Then they took a little bit of a break and then it was revived for the 1964 through 1968 model run. Montclair was the Mercury's middle of the road offering. 1959 to 1960 is considered the third generation of the Montclair. The 1959 Mercury was one of the largest cars Mercury ever built. In 1959, the Montclair offered three body styles, the two-door hardtop as well as a four-door hardtop and a four-door sedan. Because of the discontinuation of the Edsel line, a lot of Mercury bodies also got canceled during that cancellation. All right, moving on to some specs. 216.9 inches long, 80.7 inches wide, 55.7 inches tall, it rides a 126 inch wheelbase. This thing weighs 4,410 pounds, does zero to 60 with the base engine, which we'll get to all the engine options and specs in a minute. But with the base engine does zero to 60 in 8.6 seconds with a fuel mile per gallon ratio of 10.9 miles per gallon. The theoretical top speed of this vehicle is 124 miles per hour. Price, this costs $3,437, which would be equivalent to you spending $34,523.07 in the year 2022. Moving on to engines. The standard engine was the 383 cubic inch displacement V8, 6.3 liters. It makes 330 brake horsepower at 4,800 RPM, 425 foot-pounds of torque at 3,000 RPM, with a bore of 4.3 inches and a stroke of 3.3 inches, compression ratio was 10.5 to 1. Mercury also offered the 430 cubic inch Mel V8, which came in 7 liters. But before we talk about that engine, let's talk a little bit about Mel or MEL engines. They were made from 1958 to 1967. MEL stands for Mercury Edsel Lincoln. This engine design is the big block type. All MEL engines used a wedge-shaped combustion chambers. They were formed between a flat surface and an angled milled block deck, 10 degrees off square to bore axis. 
The piston on these engines determines the compression ratio and the combustion chamber shape. Mel engine sizes, the 383, the 410, the 430, and the 462. Mel engines also use two individual thermostats, and the thought process was, was to improve or regulate the coolant temperatures. Also worth mentioning, this was one of three engine families that was introduced by Ford in 1958. The other two were the Ford FE engine, the SD engine. FE stood for Ford Edsel, SD stood for Super Duty. One more point and then we're gonna move on. Chrysler always gets remembered and a lot of praise for being the very first car to have 300 horsepower. But in the same retrospect, the MEL doesn't never gets any praise for being the first car to offer 400 horsepower. And that was achieved in 1958. That gives me an episode. Maybe we'll do an episode on top five or top 10 white whales of the 50s. This car that I'm talking about that made 400 horsepower, that is definitely a white whale car. I've never seen one. What are some other white whale cars in the comment section below, please? I'm just looking for cars from the 1950s. Anyway, we're getting off track. Let's get back on track. The other engine that was on offer was the 430 cubic inch displacement MEL V8. That was seven liters. It made 350 horsepower at 4,800 RPMs, 490 pound-feet of torque at 3,100 RPMs. The bore was 3.7 inches. The stroke was 4.30 inches. Compression was 10 to 1. Let's talk about this front door panel. Armrest or door handle, whatever you use it for. The door handle to get out. This is the window crank for the big window. And notice how this window, like the back window, is all trimmed in. The vent window doesn't have a crank window, you just, it's manual. And that's as far as it goes. This is how I get inside these. I never had an issue with these dog legs. I just put one feet, foot in. If I can talk. And then I slide over. This is what the over the hood impression looks like. This is what first person looks like with the steering wheel and the gauge cluster and everything. It's a really nice interior this is. This is what I look like. Adequate headroom. There's a lot of headroom in this car. The cars in the early 50s were a lot taller so one could wear a hat. This one, you might be able to wear like a ball cap or a captain's hat, not a top hat like earlier cars. This is the under the steering wheel view. Lots of room underneath the steering wheel. You could drive this car very comfortably. I just love the fact that there is no blind spot right where there generally is a blind spot because you have a massive A pillar. There's none of that in here. This is almost like sitting behind the wheel of a spaceship. It's got sun visors at the top here. There's also a sun visor here in the rear view mirror. On to the button switches and knobs. All the way to the left hand side, those are for the headlights. Down and to the right is for the ignition switch. Moving to the right is left air vent. Moving to the drive select modes, park, reverse, neutral, drive, and low. Moving up to the instrument cluster. The speedometer is in the center. There is a small red light in the middle. That is for your high beam indicators odometer right below it then there is a fuel gauge generator and oil lights and then off to the right hand side is the temperature gauge just off to the right of this are the climate controls there are two control levers that move horizontally the top one controls the temperature it says cold to high high to low sorry and then the bottom controls where the air is located and there's one off to the end i don't know if you can tell all the way to the right hand side that that controls the blower motor moving just below the climate controls there are three buttons and or switches whatever you want to call them in this area the very first one off to the left hand side there is for the defrosters the one next to it is for the lighters and then there's one at the top and that's for the windshield wipers 
Moving to the center, just check out this radio. It's um, instead of it being horizontally opposed like they generally are, it's vertical. Very cool. This car is so big that I can't sit in the driver's seat and do the glove box test. Moving on to the glove box test. This is our test subject. This is my hand for reference about how big this test subject is. This is the glove box. And just look at how massive it is inside. It's absolutely huge. Camera fits down inside there like that. It's up at an angle. This glove box is wide and then it goes down at an angle. And it fits. This car has two ashtrays in the front. One is right here. The other one is over here, right underneath this beautiful clock. All right, getting in the back seat, just notice how this all looks. So this line starts all the way up here by the front windshield and it comes back and it starts protruding outward. It tapers outward and it comes all the way back here where it turns into this fin. Comes back around down here. It's a gorgeous design. Coming back up here, getting in the rear door. It's a lot like the front door, but it's in the back. Notice armrest back here or door handle, whatever you use it for. Look at how these door handles are designed. And the rear window operates like this. And notice how it's all chromed out. It's all trimmed out up here. And it doesn't go straight up. It kind of goes up at a slight angle and pushes up the rest of the way. But notice how it's designed. Roll it back down so you can see what it, how it goes down. All right, getting into the back seat. Lots of leg room in the back here. These seats concave in, so the top overhangs the actual seat back. My knee from the actual seat back is a good four inches. It's a good amount of space. There's a ashtray back in the back here. This is what the door looks like when it's closed. Armrest in the back here. It is a very, there's a lot of glass in this car. Greenhouse is very good as in the sense that there is a lot of visibility in this car for being how big it is. I absolutely love this design back here. I love the fact that it's part of the door. When you close the door, notice it still has this pillar on it, for lack of a better term. Notice the rear windshield where this pillar stops. This is all glass. You could fit two or three kids. I'm sorry, you could fit one or two kids back here, like small 1950s kids could sit back there in like a bunk bed. It's incredible. There's coat hooks up there, coat hook there, dome light in the center. This car could easily fit six people nowadays, six nowadays size people because people are bigger now than they were probably in the 50s. You could probably fit four people in the 50s back here in this seat. It's huge. It's absolutely wide. This is what the floor looks like. I don't know. You can't really see it. It, there's two different compartments separated by the transmission tunnel right here. The tunnel comes up pretty high. And because this is a hard top and doesn't have a pillar, look at how beefy this is. It has to be beefy because it supports the door. Also, another thing that I noticed right before I'm about to get out, this overhangs so that when you one closes the door, look at how that operates. The keys look like they look like uh, just regular Ford keys from this era um, before we open the trunk I just want to show you this is the keyhole cover and that's how it operates but right below it that's where the gas goes so it's nice that it's right in the center because then you could go to either side of the gas pump and it doesn't matter just check out how huge this trunk is that's a full-size spare you could rent this out as a studio apartment if you wanted to. It's absolutely massive.
I just I love the way that it's cut out too. It's nice and low right here, so you don't one doesn't have to pick up something like later on trunks. There had there was a wall here, so you had to pick items all the way up. This is almost like tailgate height, so one could just put their groceries. Like if I was carrying a bag or whatever, I'd carry whatever and just put it right inside here. Notice this has a single master cylinder, but it's got power brakes. Down inside here, it looks like it has power steering as well. This looks like electric windshield washer. Um, I'm sorry, electric windshield wiper motor, but that could be the washer motor to wash the windows. In the comments section below, which one is it? Is that the windshield wiper motor or is that the windshield washer motor? Okay, on to the pros and cons section. I'm getting all these pros and cons from the complete book of collectible cars, blue chip auto investments, 70 years from 1930 to 2000 by Richard M. Langworth and the auto editors of Consumer Guide. And to be 100% fair, the Montclair isn't in this book, but the Park Lane is, and they're very, very similar. So on the positive side, period size and style huge interiors smooth performance still somewhat overlooked and thus cheap against it moderately rust prone thirsty not many preserves so both cars and some parts are scarce now okay on to name that tune first person to get the name of the song and the correct artist slash band will be pinned to the top of the comment section Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, till next time, toodaloo!